Welcome to the Real Voices Podcast, where we explore the personal journeys of real estate professionals through their own unique challenges and successes. Real Voices is brought to you by Equitable Title and Escrow, providing a better approach to title and escrow through team support and innovative services. Welcome, welcome to another wonderful episode. I am your host, Marlo Randolph with Equitable Title, and we have a special guest here. We have the real estate commissioner, Louis Dutori. You got it. All right, got Very it. Very good. Very good. <laughs> hey, I appreciate you coming on. Thank you for spending a little bit of time yeah, with us. Yeah, glad to be here, Marlo. It's always a, a nice opportunity to be able to share a little bit about the department, uh, what we're doing well, and uh, some of our successes, and hear from you all. So glad to be here. Thanks. Awesome. Thank you. Well, we definitely want to talk about that, but I always like to uh, get into a little bit of the why for individuals. Like, why did you decide uh, politics? What was it that sparked sure. your interest there? Yeah, it's a great it's a great question. So um, I've been with the uh, the Arizona Department of Real Estate uh, for about ten years. This is my tenth year. I've been in in various roles. I started as a uh, a legislative liaison back in 2012, um, and over the years, you know, you you um, get more handed to you, and, and especially when you have an interest and a desire to really do well and find a love for uh, for an industry and course that's the real estate profession so uh, over the years I've uh, uh, oversaw overseen our operations uh, our accounting our investigations our budgeting financial strategic planning and we're a small agency we're an agency right now of about 25 staff and you really get a love for for this industry as you know and, and anyone listening to this knows the real estate profession especially in Arizona is it's, it's a great place to live it's a great place to be Arizona's home and uh, to be a public servant and serve this industry of now about 91,000 real estate licensees. If you can, if you can believe it, 15% increase since uh, uh, 2015. It's just a, it's a great place to be. And it's an honor to be a a public servant and serve, serve this industry in Arizona. Awesome. I appreciate that, man. So I'm thinking about that. You're serving 91,000, you know, basically direct sure. agents and then you also have the consumers that you're dealing with on that's top right of that. so with the 25 people that you have working with you and under you um, how are you guys handling that what does that look like for you sure it's a really great uh, really great question and you know believe it or not back in 2009 my uh, my predecessor former commissioner judy Lowe, that i had the opportunity to really to work with my mentor uh my friend um to soak up um, her love for the real estate profession really soak it up like a like a sponge she would say um, that it's just we would do we, we've found advancements found a way to to work through the workload and the increases the growth in the in the industry using technology back in 2009 uh, when commissioner Lowe first uh, took the helm at the department there were 72 at, uh, department employees and really we needed that level of staffing because everything was paper I hear about the time when we were at our old office uh, office building that the lines would be out the door and wow. they would be waiting to just do something as simple as renew your license. Wow. Now we have online services. You have your personal page. Licensees can, can renew their license online. We have 98% super majority of our services that are available online so it's a self-service online message center that you can interact with the department um, on and, and we're really happy about those services especially during uh, during the pandemic where there was no other option right. we had those services in place so our staff is great we have a very dedicated uh, staff of 25 that just love what they do and we love that they're that they're at the department awesome okay thank you appreciate that sure um, just thinking about uh, things that are making, you know, what's all in the industry, what's making the phone ring, right? Just um, wanted to touch base on that briefly. What are some of the things that you're seeing that's on the co- consumer end? What's making sure. consumers call you? Sure. Well, as as anyone in, in real estate in Arizona knows right now, and Arizona is not unique uh, to uh, the happenings across the country, but Arizona is unique in that we've experienced a level of growth that surpasses other states. So with that comes a very busy uh, real estate market. Things are hot. There's a, there's a question always about well the challenge of of the invent of inventory available inventory and as Arizona uh, makes strides to uh, to increase that inventory and by addressing affordable housing and other opportunities through that you know we receive a lot of calls around uh, you know uh, my neighbor down the street um, they sold their home a couple weeks ago and 
this was what they received as a as a um, you know purchase price for their property, and this is what happened happened to me. Is there a problem? So the department reviews those those type of complaints should they be filed or just inquiries and says, is this something that's within our jurisdiction? Is this a violation of Arizona statute rule? And we'll work through that and and we'll investigate or we'll look at that as as. Uh, as, as we're required. But not just about investigation issues. What makes the phone ring? You know, was I treated fairly in my, in my transaction? Um, was my offer presented? You know, there's so, again, going back to that competitive market, there, um, uh, was, it, was it considered? And if it wasn't considered, what do I do? What's my recourse? And um, so we review those type of issues and try to provide the consumer with an answer to give them some relief. And that's not limited um, to, um, it's not um, um, beyond the department to reach out to a designated broker okay. and connect the parties together so that they can find some resolution, you know, Makes as sense. opposed to just looking at it from a regulatory uh, perspective, although that may be required. That makes sense. Makes sense. So I'm um, just thinking about uh, on the on the opposite side of that agents. Um, I know you're getting calls from them as well. What does that look like? What are they complaining sure. about? Well, again, in the, uh, the, the real estate profession right now, there are about 70,000 uh, licensees that are active uh, in the mm-hmm. trenches, um, helping <laughs> buyers and sellers. And the real estate profession is really good about letting the department know about issues that they see that are out there as mm-hmm. well, in addition to just the, uh, from the, the, public, the public side right. and those public complaints. So we appreciate that. We think that there's some, uh, uh, you know, it's for ac- accountability of mm-hmm. themselves and, yeah. and, and the industry. Well, uh, oftentimes in a uh, state government perspective, you hear that as self-policing. Mm-hmm. I don't know if it's uh, self-policing as much as it is just expressing concerns. Uh, but, you know, among those are um, you know, advertising issues and let us know. That's a common one that we hear uh, at the Department of. You know, I saw this and it's a uh, it's an issue. We don't have the uh, the staff, as you noted, yeah. to uh, drive around and, and um, note those. So we're we're, we're complaint driven in that in yeah. that respect, and, and we we do receive those from from agents. But another one to to uh, keep in mind as it relates to servicing consumers as well. Here's from consumers, but also from agents. I'm not able to get a hold of the other agent on the other side of the transaction. I have questions. I'm trying to service my my client, and uh, my texts go unanswered, my calls go unanswered, and there's no um, agent-to-agent, broker-to-broker uh, customer service. So we encourage at the <laughs> department, you know, be as responsive as you can, pick up that phone. But it's like I said, it's very busy out there. So right, right. Um, Makes sense. Sure. So I was just going, wanted to go back to, um, and maybe we're not so much in that in that situation right now, um, but we may be in the in the spring, right? Um, for the multiple offers, where there's 15 offers, how can a listing agent um, make sure that each offer is at least made aware? How, what do you? What sure. Do you, how do you? Or what do you suppose they should go about doing to to just make sure yeah, that's taken it's care a, of? Yeah, it's a it's a great question, and I've heard uh, I've heard several. Uh, several strategies or ways that that's done. I've heard that uh, some some agents will put all of the offers on a spreadsheet and will present that spreadsheet to the uh, to their um, client in order for for consideration. Uh, but taking it back to Arizona statute, Arizona statute says well, we'll talk about the retention of rejected offers. Says that you must retain a rejected offer for at least one year. Mm-hmm. If an offer is uh, goes forward and it moves towards the escrow and the escrow process for close, that offer needs to be maintained for five years. Mm-hmm. So if the department receives a complaint, we will first go to that broker and that agent and say, do you have a copy of that rejected offer or that offer? And if that can be provided, that we have a, a documentation around that, then it says it's you have it's there and you know, we're we're not in your hair any longer. If that documentation isn't there, that's when we have a further conversation around it. So I would just encourage, uh, department would encourage documentation or uh, assist both both parties in, in to provide that. So lots of different uh, strategies to do that, but certainly uh, documentation helps the process. That makes so. sense. That actually is new to me as far as the, sure. the retention part of that. Um, so is that as far um, when the retention part is that required for the broker and the agent to? Re- 
to retain yeah, it or one or the other? Great question. It needs to be in the transaction transaction file. So okay. that agent should be moving that transaction file to the to the to broker the as well. But but maintaining that that documentation, like I said, is important. And Marlo, you bring up a good point. As we've talked about, the department has talked about you know the the. Uh, uh, busyness of the market and that is being a common issue you're not the only one that has said oh this I'm re required to, to, to do that and uh, so we're glad again right. our our um, uh, importance of our role as well is to provide some consumer some some education around what are those requirements too so and we we've been saying that for the last year or so as that's be as that's an issue yeah I appreciate it thank you thank you um, as far as uh, the upcoming year what what just kind of looking forward with our crystal ball. What do you sure. foresee challenges that we may be facing or, or seeing this, sure. this coming year? Well, and I always like to compare crystal balls, the, mm -hmm. the your crystal ball <laughs> to mine, because it always uh, is the question of what's what's on the, the horizon. We share share notes and collaborate on that. So this is a, uh, an, a, 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 a the time of year where our legislative session comes comes into uh, comes into play. They do their work. They're supposed to do their work for about a hundred days or so. And, uh, and wrap up. It's sometimes it's a little longer, sometimes it's a little less. So this, uh, this, this legislative session, they came together January 10th, which mm -hmm. is the second Monday in January, which is customary that when they come together. And uh, thus far, there are about 800 uh, pieces of legislation that have been introduced. Last year, if I um, uh, remember correctly, there were about 1,700 wow. total bills that were introduced over various topics mm -hmm. uh, related to you know various statewide statewide issues. So the department, along with other state agencies and you know private sector, real estate, uh, AAR, mm -hmm. um, other uh, state associations and groups, will look at that legislation and try to determine what is the uh, what's the impact of all this uh, new all these new proposed uh, bills. What's that going to be? The department's role in that is to um, identify what could affect the department or provide education if asked you know around the different different new uh, bills that are introduced we don't necessarily take a position on bills we're really there for education and to talk about proposed you know what what could be the impact of of something but we do spend spend time to review and ensure that we understand you know what what's coming down the road uh, but to your question around what what's coming, we're in the review process. Like I said, there are lots of bills that are introduced. Uh, some that that affect that affect real estate. We um, we're primarily um, from an agency perspective of a of a piece of legislation that we're running uh, okay. this year. You may be interested in this. So so every um, period of time could be different different depending on um, depending on the year, but. We have to pass a piece of legislation called a continuation bill to continue the existence of the Department of Real Estate. Back okay. in 2012, this same legislation was introduced that uh, received a vote that the Department of Real Estate should exist for 10 years. Fast forward to, uh, to 2022, this continuation bill is always preceded by an agency audit, a review of how well the agency is performing and uh, provides a recommendation to the legislature that says we should continue to exist. Wow. Uh, we went in front of the, uh, the House and the Senate last week. I presented about our agency performance, and there was a recommendation for us to continue for eight years, okay. which is a customary period of time. A little nuance of, of, of state government talk. Uh, yeah. The Department of Real Estate going through that process isn't unique. All state agencies go through a sunrise and sunset process. And okay. uh, we'll we'll navigate that and go through. But we believe what we do is important to serve serve the public and the or the real estate profession. So we awesome. we anticipate that we're not we're not going anywhere. <laughs> but we'll continue to prioritize and do the good work that we do. Awesome. Hey, I appreciate that. I'm got I got a secret uh, lesson going on over <laughs> here. I didn't realize that either. That yeah. that I'll just assume it once it was a created agency. It's just sure no one's really. We never really go back on those things. So cool. That's that's good to hear. That's a little, a little nuance, right. a little nuance. But you're right to say that and accountability. And that's what the that's what the process is intended for, for the legislature to say, you know, for instance, for an agency that that that, um, you know, if we were not performing. Well, why? Why? What's the what's the problem? When? How are you going to correct that? So we, we take that very seriously right. and, and and put those opportunities for improvement in place just as fast as we wow. can. Man, that's almost like a nuclear option. Either you got it right or you're gone. It's interesting. Okay. Sure. I appreciate that. Thank of you. Course. Thank you. Um, I was just thinking about uh, still going back to like complaints and um, especially on the, the agent side of things. Um, with, with newer agents, 
just thinking of trying to keep them out of trouble, right? Sure. We have a lot of those that, that listen. What are some, I guess, tips that you can give a newer agent to maybe keep yourself out of trouble? It's a great, great question. And it all comes back to education. You know, in Arizona, you take 90 hours of pre-licensing education to get your license. Right, you pass a state, you pass an examination of national questions, state questions, and uh, and then you get hired on with, with a brokerage. Well, then at that point, your continuing education is 24 hours every two years. But I would say, and former Commissioner Lowe would always say, it's all about education. Arizona has has great continuing education classes. They're relevant. They're important to take to stay plugged in. But what are you doing? as an agent beyond to stay engaged and know what's really happening in the profession. What do you need to know? What are the hot topics? Are you, um, uh, are you plugged in with your designated broker? Do you have mentors in the industry that have been, been doing it for a long time? Um, there's more that can be done to stay plugged in, stay involved, and have a pulse of what's happening. And then also, I, I, you know, I think that there's tremendous um, uh, importance to think of as when you're treating, when you're um, when you're working with the client, with your client, you treat your client like you would treat your mother, and you like your mother, mm -hmm. you know, and you hold their hand, and you do what they. Purchasing a home is the largest transaction that most individuals will right. make in their lifetime. That's an investment, both an investment in in uh, financial, but also it's their home. Right. And what did we learn during the during the pandemic? Your home could be used for uh, right. for your workplace right. uh, as well. It's the most important um, uh, purchase that you're probably going to make in your lifetime. And, and holding their hand and treating it as such is just just really important. So. Um, so advice to someone that's coming into the industry, uh, uh, treat it with the utmost importance and, uh, and reverence, truly. I like that. I appreciate that. Thank you. Um, I also just wanted to kind of just stick on that just a little bit. Sure. Uh, a lot of the times newer agents feel that they are not, I don't know, they're not good enough, right? So they don't take action. Um, but passing the, passing the exam of it in and of itself, how, how do you, what do you think about that? What do you say to that, just being able to get through the exam sure. in school? That's a great question. It's an accomplishment. You know, in, in Arizona, we, in Arizona is, uh, is you, I'll start here. Arizona is unique to the extent that our water laws are different than, than other states. You as a real estate licensee, you can write a contract. In many states in the United States, an attorney has to be at the closing. That contract is performed by legal services. Right. In Arizona, you can you can write a contract on a napkin. Right. Now, granted, that's something to consider as far as the you know right. the obligations and the, the performance of that, uh, but but it can be done. So so again, going back to that education, you need to get it right, and the implications of not getting it right are significant on, on, on all parties. So, uh, but passing that exam, being plugged in to pass that and, and take the education that you need is, is very, very important. Awesome, thank you, I appreciate it. Just a good plug for those that, you're, you're a professional, right? You've, mm -hmm. you've gotten that license, so. And, and Marlo, to that point, and going back to, uh, to just the, the, tone, the tone of our office and talking about real estate and the real estate industry over the last um, 10 years, 10 of those years, uh, 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 10 of Commissioner Lowe's 12 years at the department, I was right there with her and she okay. talked about and she was relentless to say real estate is a profession and we'll continue that to talk about it. It's not just an industry, it is a profession and getting into that. Other professions we think of are, to, are an attorney, right. a doctor. Mm -hmm. Real estate is a profession. You get into it with that same, with that same uh, respect for what you're doing. Thank you, I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. That goes back to my always, is there a, a, a real estate agent in the house? Because everyone needs one. Everyone needs a place to live. So it's just like if there's a doctor in the house, you're, sure. you're a professional. So Absolutely. Thank you. I appreciate that. I was looking over the um, the website and uh, just your introduction, and it talked about the team a um, aspect of, of the department right. and, and joining hands with the other departments. Could you talk a little bit about your, your vision for that and what that, that looks like for yeah, you? Yeah, absolutely. And the, uh, the, the, the attitude and the approach of team has, is something that has been well established here within the department. Again, you talked about our, our staff size as being 25 to serve uh, 91,000 real estate licensees, as well as the other divisions within the department. We approve uh, real estate schools, instructors, mm -hmm. 
courses. There are 220 real estate schools, including branches in the, in the state. We oversee an HOA dispute process where actually we, we handle or we administer that process of, of a petition that we receive by a homeowner or an HOA about a complaint between, uh, between uh, a violation of a bylaw or a CCNR or a state statute. We don't, we don't regulate HOAs okay. and we don't license community management companies, but we receive those petitions usually about 60 60 per year and then we have another large component of our department which is to approve public report uh, public report applications mm -hmm. for subdivisions either a new home build or it could be um, what's classified as a subdivider in statute is any individual anyone that owns six or more lots or parcels in a community so yeah. that could be an investor or a or a home builder can i oh, so i was in a class yesterday sure. and they, they brought that up and it kind of shook me a little bit because uh, she was under the understanding that it could be that community could be you know you could be in Avondale with four four parcels and then maybe in Peoria with two and that's considered a community is that is that a correct interpretation sure. that's a it's a great question so it's something that that if if an individual who does own um, the property in, in that in that scenario uh, I'd encourage them to reach out to the department okay. and to, to ask the question of if a public report is required because you want to have a public report if it's required but a few years ago the statute was amended slightly to clear up any confusion around okay. that to say okay. it needs to be in the same in the same community okay but I would encourage any individual in that situation to contact the department so we could look at and provide any clarity if it's necessary so anyone with six or more properties should probably reach out to you guys they could reach out okay. but I believe that we uh, we clarified that okay uh, awesome. in our statute to uh, to uh, relieve any ambiguity to clarify that it needs to be in the same in the same community oh, great I'll get her to update that then that was a uh, sure that was, I appreciate that thank you let her know she can call me she I, can will. Call me. <laughs> I will great. thank you uh, so going back to the team concept, and I just talk about, uh, I, I mention our other divisions as well. So, you know, we don't just do the, the licensing, but um, when you have multiple teams across divisions, it's really important that the together everyone achieves more mantra as we, as we hear um, um, hear that said, that everyone is not working in a silo. One division, um, he needs to collaborate with another division as there's just cross cross department uh, um, items that could be could be um, thought of. So um, within our development services division, we've had a, a ten year high of applications to that division uh, around uh, uh, public reports, mm -hmm. amendments to an existing public report, different types of exemption for maybe a public report uh, is being requested that it not be not be re required. Uh, ten year highs of that, and that was even during 2020 when when we had you know various challenges, right. and that indicates that in Arizona there's tremendous growth in activity that's happening to meet the need of providing housing to Ari Arizonans. So awesome. within the department, we are really plugged in to the needs of our of our customers to um, approve what we need to do and get out of the way, and we couldn't do that without a team without a team approach. So every day it means interacting with your staff and making sure that they, um, that they have what they need to do, yeah. their, to do their job. And um, you know, it's just, just an evolving conversation and a lot of effort and a lot of work. That's, that's rough, it's <laughs> tough. It seems like a lot for sure. Um, I was just thinking about, you mentioned earlier in the conversation, um, you know, the, the a bit, trying to bring you know, affordable housing to the communities here. Um, I just want to talk a little bit about that. Um, are you working with the economic development um, committee and all that community to to bring that to the to the communities? And what does that sure. look like? And when does that look like? I guess absolutely. So it, it's a it, I would say it's just it's a continual conversation. You know, a continual. Um, um, Lots of effort by lots of different stakeholders and lots of different different parties. Well, it does not. Um, it, it's really in Arizona, led by the Arizona Department of Housing. They're doing tremendous work. Director Tom Simplot at that at that agency is doing tremendous work to advance the conversation of affordable housing, engaging municipalities and counties, and uh, of course the Department of Real Estate as well. We have. We like to be at the table of the conversation to provide any assistance that we can, but that conversation is, is really with the Department of Housing, 
um, with uh, with the local local governments and to, to meet that need. But we're we're uh, available to be as helpful as we can today. In fact, we have a, a quarterly uh, we call it a partners meeting. Okay. We've had that for about four or five years, which is a a stakeholder meeting pretty well open agenda to talk about uh, various topics. It includes our real estate uh, brokers, our mortgage and uh, uh, mortgage lenders in the mortgage industry, any any individual that wants to attend, uh, other agencies, the Department of Housing was there as well. You see a little social on that that today. Um, And uh, who am I missing? Our title and escrow partners. So we know we need to make sure that you can come come to this uh, (laughs) meeting as well. We'll get you get you an invite. We do notice all these meetings in our bulletin as well. We'll plug for our okay. quarterly bulletin. Uh, but And these are open discussions and open opportunity to collaborate on different issues and problem solve okay. um, of those. So so the, the discussion of affordable housing will continue. And, uh, um, you know, right, right. it's a it's, it's, a, it's, it's going to be a journey with lots of focus. For sure, mm-hmm. for sure it's ongoing. Okay. Um, but one of the, I guess the, one of the questions I was asked to ask you is how could we, as far as the industry is on, on our part, title, escrow, um, what are some things that we could do to maybe help to help things move along and make sure. things smooth? Well, and again, Marlo, in this in this indus, in this uh, in this market, it's incredibly busy right now. Holding the hands of your customers, uh, of your clients, I like to say that the Department of Real Estate, our mission is to protect the uh, uh, protect the public, public protection through their real estate transaction, mm-hmm. uh, through licensure, through regulation. But we. We need partners in order to uh, to do that to serve customers, and we think that our our partner is the real estate profession, title and escrow, anyone that touches that that transaction. So having a conversation like this, having it, inviting the department to have a conversation around what's going on is just I think is so valuable okay. uh, to continue and have. In of course, letting the department know, letting letting your state agencies know. Uh, what's going on out there, what's needed, and how we can uh, be at the table for that. Okay. Makes sense, makes sense. Um, if I were to like, maybe ask a few of your coworkers what your motto would be, what what is something you're always pushing forward? What do you think that they'd say? What would that be? Yeah, that's a that's a great question. That wasn't on the that wasn't on the on the sheet to consider before this. That's a good one. No, I would say that um, I believe that that we as public servants need to be relentless to serve the public and our our real estate profession. That's through the improvement of our services. That's through having a vision of offering good customer service. That's about being available and being timely and giving quality, quality services. I'll give you an example, and I may have already touched on this, uh, but you know, our public reports, our subdivision public reports are required by statute to be approved in 100 days. Mm-hmm. We approve those in under three days, and we've done that consistently over the last uh, four or five years, and it's because of our dedicated staff that believe what we talk about, which is if we can be efficient at what we do and we step out of the way, those, those sales can happen over the weekend. That, that economic activity can continue, and why take 100 days when our process says we can do it in three? When you can approve a license in one day and your regulation says you have to approve it in 60 days. That's been consistent over the last several years. But that can't be done if your team doesn't buy into Mm -hmm. the idea of believing what we do is important and see the value of that. You mentioned, Marlo, you mentioned a new a new licensee who's excited that they just passed the exam. Maybe they passed it on their second attempt. Right, yeah. Maybe it was their third attempt. But they're proud of the fact that they are now a real estate agent. Right. They have the opportunity. They apply with the department. They want an answer now. Yeah. And they should have an answer as quickly as right. possible because they just invested all of that time and effort into, uh, you know, into becoming a real estate licensee. I appreciate that perspective because all it has is the, you know, the bureaucracy and how long sure. it takes. And so I appreciate the perspective. And, um, yeah, I guess that does show up with just the, the results. So thank you. Thank Absolutely. You. Um, I wanted to just if I could just take you back in, in time just a little bit to when you were a kid. I, I love to ask, you know, what what inspired you when you were who or who? What was that like for you? Sure. Yeah. So uh, so growing up, I was a uh, an avid an avid baseball player. And um, saying this in Arizona is probably uh, um, not a uh, um, 
not a welcome thing, but I'll say I always had had ideas that I was going to be a New York Yankee. Okay. Now, you right. can hold that against me, but I, <laughs> I, I always had aspirations of I wanted to be, uh, uh, I wanted to, uh, to play baseball. I wanted yeah. to do that. And, you know, through, through sports, uh, through, uh, through playing, I played in college uh, as well. I always thought, um, 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 now I think, you know, looking back, the, the, the leadership things that you learn about being on a team, right. you know, in sports is really translatable to, to business, to, to working in an organization. And I, and I love that aspect, I think, of, of what, what to do, the camaraderie, the, right. the, the teamwork, to be a part of a higher goal of achieving achieving something we didn't always achieve it we weren't the we weren't the best <laughs> but um but anyway so so i i always enjoyed that always had an interest as well you know we talked about public service always had an interest about the intersection of of business and the requirements of a of a of government mm-hmm. you know government you you said bureau, uh, bureaucracy yeah. well you know in arizona um, from our governor pushing down to the agencies, we are required to 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 limit that, if not eliminate it, and and do your job and get out of, get out of the way. And we've we've worked really hard uh, to do that, of where the intersection of where a state agency and business understands each other's needs, while still observing the uh, the law and making sure that we adhere to what we need to do it together. Yeah. I appreciate that. I can, you know, I can kind of attest that I've had the uh, the privilege of being licensed in, a mul- in multiple states and, and living in multiple states and sure. dealing with that. Um, things are really they're on the on point here, so I can I can appreciate that. And, what have your interactions with the Department of Real Estate been like? And, uh, and I didn't ask you this question no. in advance as oh, well. Oh no, so that's be okay. honest. Yeah, so personally, you're really the first, other than previous commissioner that we've had at classes and things, and I was really appreciative sure. of her. Um, but just to, your willingness to come out and, and be in the public and, and sit down and answer some questions, that's that's top notch for me. So I, I really appreciate that. Thank you. Great. Yeah. Well, that's that's what I have. That's all I had. I really appreciate you coming on today. Um, I get we usually like to ask, where can the people find you at? Right. How can they how can they get a hold of sure. you? Sure. If that's if that's a thing. Right. Sure. We're 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 with the times. We have a Twitter account. All right. And uh, you can you can see us there. Right. Our website, which has been modernized over the last year or so. So we're getting into uh, into the current century. Um, it's www dot a z r e dot gov and when you see that site you'll see a host of services online services and uh, interact with us and let us know how we can be the most helpful awesome thank you so much i appreciate you coming sure. today thanks for having me yeah.